During the full-scale war, Russia removed from storage almost half of all armored vehicles that had been stockpiled there since the 1950s. Of what remains, more than half are in poor technical condition, according to OSINT analyst Covert Cabal, who calculated these reserves using available satellite images. Thus, as of 2021, there were 22,173 units of various armored vehicles in open areas of Russian equipment storage bases. These are different generations of tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and armored personnel carriers. According to Covert Cabal's calculations, as of 2024, these stocks have fallen dramatically to 12,504 units, or by 44%. Moreover, of these 12,000 cars remaining in warehouses, about 6,800 are in poor or downright deplorable condition. According to calculations, there are no T-90 tanks left in Russian warehouses and T-64 and T-55 tanks are only in poor condition. T-62, T-72 and T-80 tanks are available in small quantities and mostly in poor condition. The situation with infantry armored vehicles looks somewhat better. There are about 1,200 BMPs in good condition, as well as almost 1,900 armored personnel carriers of different generations. Russia has probably already passed the peak of demothballing infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers in storage. Most of the BMPs left in storage are rusty and empty hulls that have been there for years and they are starting to pull even older armored vehicles out of storage that they have refused to use until now. But right now, the Russian army apparently simply has no other options, an OSINT analyst who operates on Twitter under the pseudonym Jumpy told Radio Liberty. Iran has requested advanced air defense systems for Russia amid preparations for a potential large-scale war with Israel, reports the Wall Street Journal. Two Iranian officials familiar with military planning have confirmed that Tehran has approached Russia for modern radars and air defense systems. The report noted that former Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu arrived in Iran, where he met with the country's new president, Masoud Pezeshkian, and Brigadier General Mohammed Bagheri, the Iranian military chief responsible for planning strikes against Israel. During the meeting, Pezeshkian expressed Iran's determination to deepen its relationship with Russia as a strategic partner. Russia is among the countries that have stood by the Iranian nation during difficult times, the new president said. Pezeshkian also condemned what he described as the criminal actions of Israel in Gaza and the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran last week, calling them blatant violations of international laws and norms. The president said that shared positions between Iran and Russia in promoting a multipolar world will certainly lead to greater global security and peace. We are ready for full cooperation with Iran on regional issues, affirmed Shoigu in response. Iranian officials quoted by the New York Times say Russia has begun delivering advanced air defense and radar equipment to Iran after officials in Tehran asked the Kremlin for the arms. The report comes as Iranian state media report that the country's new president, Masoud Pezeshkian, told a visiting senior ally of Kremlin leader Vladimir Putin that Tehran is determined to expand relations with its strategic partner in Russia. Russia is among the countries that have stood by the Iranian nation during difficult times, Pezeshkian told Sergei Shoigu, the secretary of Russia's Security Council, in a meeting Iranian state media report. Recall last week, Israeli forces eliminated senior Hamas official Ismail Haniyeh and Hezbollah leader Fawad Shukur. In response, Iran has declared its readiness to launch a massive strike against Israel. The Israeli military is preparing for a multi-day assault involving missiles and drones from Iran, Hezbollah militants in Lebanon, and Houthi rebels in Yemen. According to media reports, Iran is likely to attack Israel on August the 12th and 13th. Recently, Washington urged Iran to temper its retaliation for the killing of the Hamas leader, but Tehran rejected the offer.